It's pretty clear things have changed significantly. Uh, since I started working on Lightroom back in 2005, um, you know, the environment was, was one where you had a photographer and they had a computer and you had some software in that computer and then everything else kind of was minimal in the workflow and in the experience. Yeah, you had almost a little closed loop, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was kind of really treating the photographic workflow as an island. Um, and while we've tried to expand that experience and connect our uh, solutions to the to the internet, to various um, other services like publishing to Facebook or Flickr or things like that, it really is just kind of a baby step. It's, it's really dipping your toe in the water. And meanwhile, we're watching things uh, move faster and faster around us. So you've got Dropbox, you've got uh, Squarespace, you've got SmugMug, all these connected services that are, you know, extending the photographic workflow off of the desktop. Uh, you know, even to the point where you're taking it to mobile devices like tablets and smartphones. Um, so the desktop, actually, the role of the desktop is actually shrinking a little bit. And what we're seeing is the entire ecosystem of solutions that live around the desktop are growing. And what we've been asking photographers to do in that transition is basically um, manage their own solution, pick and choose these independent services and then try and Kludge together a workflow. Yeah, that's uh, kind of what I do. I use Dropbox a lot, so I'll, I'll process in my images in Lightroom. Um, I'll save them as JPEGs. Yeah. I'll put them in Dropbox, and then I'll go to my iPad. I'll go to Dropbox on my iPad, then I put them into a gallery. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's. There's a workflow there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just maybe not the, the smoothest. It's, it's reminiscent of pre-Lightroom when you had a lot of different solutions for digital photography that you had to kind of cobble together with scripts and actions and Photoshop yeah. and then other yeah. solutions uh, and media asset managers and things like that. And then we came out with Lightroom and said, hey, look, here's a full solution. Uh, but now I think we have to revisit that discussion uh, given the prevalence of mobile devices and cloud-based services that photographers are using. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody's kind of into it. So what, what is that idea, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have to... Can I get a close on that camera? Um, yeah, it's a close I, camera. I'm going to set expectations here, because uh, I know probably some of the engineers might be, who are going to build this thing I'm talking about might be watching. Uh, and so if I overcommit, that's the phrase they use, I get in deep trouble. So okay. so we're looking at stuff in the future. It's, it's definitely my focus right now. Um, given that Lightroom 5 is, is now in public beta and will we'll ship relatively soon, um, is, is focusing on a solution that extends beyond the desktop. And well, when, when you say extend beyond the desktop, though, what do you mean? Well, I, I think I need to have more seamless connectivity with my web offerings, with my mobile devices. I don't want to have to think about publishing a set of JPEGs to load into iTunes to load into my iPad once I've had it connected or things Move like on that. Move the Dropbox and yeah. pull them into Are you making fun of my workflow? <laughs> I think it's, you know, it's, there are blog posts, dozens of blog posts on this topic of, you know, how do you, how do you get this stuff out to your other devices? And, you know, really people should be looking to Adobe and saying, well, you should solve this. I think they are looking to Adobe saying you should solve this. So that's what I'm here to talk about. And, you know, it's not it's not right around the corner. It's not going to happen with Lightroom 5 when we get that ready for release. Uh, it's not going to happen soon, but it's not it's not going to be before retirement or anything, you know. Oh, good. <laughs> you know, my retirement or yours. You know, so it's it's kind of in that intermediate stage where it's a it's a it's an ongoing project that we're working on internally. It's just not ready for even a public beta. Uh, and you'll see in a little bit, I've got a, a tiny bit of a technology preview so you can get a sense of some of the value that we're working on. Okay. So to answer the question, Tom, which I want to keep asking again, <laughs> is, is what it, what's in the cloud for photographers? So you're, you're, you're hinting around that there's something that's going to tie all this together. Right. And so it's something we're building. And I just want to kind of paint you a little picture. Um, so do you have a smartphone? Yeah, I do. Do you have a smartphone? Mm -hmm. Do you have a tablet? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, that one does. Here. Okay. Not. So we've got we got a couple pieces that we're going to pull together in okay. a, kind of a puzzle. Uh, I have desktop computer. Yep, right running here. Lightroom and Photoshop on it. Yep. Um, okay, so we've got those those two pieces. Now we need to start connecting them. So we've got um, cloud-based services at Adobe. And what's the big disconnect between your desktop and your mobile devices? Well, I mean, you kind of saw what my my mine is. I, I have a I have a workflow if I use my phone, Tom. If I take a shot with this, and I and I love that it's on here. It's immediately on my my desktop machine, mm -hmm. and it's on my iPad. So 
I like that. I, I think I, I have a semi-working work. If the photo starts here. If, if the, the photo, photo starts, starts here, what yeah. if it starts here? What if it what if it starts like I take take with my DSLR? Yeah, so I think that's I the here, big difference. Then I have to go to the Dropbox thing and do the Dropbox thing. So that's yeah. As long as I shoot with my phone, I have a wonderful workflow. <laughs> So one of the things that we introduced with the Lightroom 5 Public Beta actually addresses some of the issues for the, the desktop to mobile experience. And that's uh, the smart preview technology we introduced. So my, my biggest issue, you know, I shot probably 15 gigs last weekend and it fits fine on my, my laptop, but the, I, I would have to delete a bunch of stuff off my yeah. iPad if I wanted to have the 15 gigs of information with and me on my mobile device. That's why I don't use the iPad in my, my photography workflow. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's just not, especially with shooting with a D800, it's, it's, yeah. it's not possible. And, and, and Tom, today's average DSLR is um, the 24 megapixels. If you go out and buy even an inexpensive DSLR, mm -hmm. it's 24 megapixels. So when I have my apps on my, my iPad and then whatever else is on there and a movie or two and a few episodes of Walking Dead, <laughs> more than a few, a whole season. Anyway, then... Um, I, I, he's, Matt's right. There's just not enough room to, to edit. So here's the beauty of smart previews. One of the workflows uh, and solutions it will help support. It basically takes the hundred gigs of you know stuff you shot in the last week, if you're shooting that much, um, and it will create representations of them, not JPEGs, because JPEGs are kind of baked, you can't adjust them anymore. It creates representations of those raw files, those originals, and or JPEGs, and gives you a version of them it's anywhere from two to four percent of the original file size. Okay, so I, I shot on Friday. Brad and I did a series of shoots. I shot 36 megabyte, 36 gig, on Friday. There's not even 36 gig of room left on my. On so my you're yeah. looking at about a gig and a half of smart previews that you could work with on your mobile device. So I, I see the images. I work with them. Mm -hmm. But okay, so it's a smart previews thing from Lightroom Five Public Beta. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So you're you are you saying, Tom? Are, what you're saying? Let's clarify this, Senator. What are you what you're saying is you're you're taking that capability that we have under on the public beta to a tablet. We definitely have that opportunity. I don't want to so, overcommit. Uh, well, here, I, <laughs> I'm trying to lead I've you down the path. Yeah, I've done enough interviews with Tom. So, Tom, would you say? Because because you, you'll get this in in a second here. Would you say that should I be editing photos on my laptop? and I have 36 gig that I just shot, and then I decide that I'd love to be working with that stuff on my iPad, that- The same number of images. Be, it would be a good idea to maybe push that up to the Creative Cloud, and then when I grab my iPad out, I'd be able to see those images. Would you say that'd be a good idea? Would you say Tom? it could happen automatically? I think if it happens seamlessly, it would be a wonderful thing. So I'll give see, you. Whenever a, Tom it, says it's a wonderful thing, it's good. A it, little anecdote. So I, you know, I shot the. <laughs> <laughs> I shot we're the, deciphering. We're, Tom, we're here to decipher what with, Tom is saying. With, remember, with Lightroom Four, Tom said cloning and healing would be a would be a great idea. And then in Lightroom and then Five, five you have cl real cloning and healing. Well, and yeah, I, I rarely sneak stuff, so um, it's a little <laughs> challenging for me. Um, but yes, uh, I I shot those 12 gigs over the weekend, and on Sunday night, all I wanted to do was relax, uh, sit in the couch with my wife, and kind of look through some of the shots. And I didn't want to have to get my laptop open, right. process a bunch. I just wanted to open my mobile device, but preferably my tablet, and just kind of breeze through them and see what's going on, maybe do. This, this happened to me literally on the night before my seminar, Monday night in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, we're in the restaurant with, with a buddy. I have my, my iPad and I'm telling you about some shots and I had to go to my hotel room and get my laptop and go, and I had my iPad right there. But you know, I, I, you know, I don't have room for anything on there. All right, so. So we, so we have the technology to start connecting these things. In fact, we, we've been experimenting and doing some, some great stuff with, with Adobe Rebel that, that starts to kind of explore this workflow, workflow for photographers. And so we definitely have an opportunity, but one of the things that's been a challenge for um, photographers who work with Photoshop and Lightroom is that they have, um, expectations of quality around raw processing and you know the, the Lightroom develop module. Right. And so we, they don't want to compromise with JPEGs. And so the, the thing I wanted to kind of sneak today was actually related to taking that raw processing and actually bringing it onto the mobile device. So t Tom, <laughs> is what you're saying we're about to see and I don't know this is what we're about to see, but I can see it on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> Are what we're gonna see 
raw processing from Adobe on a tablet. Yes. Aha! Aha, Tom! <laughs> All right. Now, uh, so, when, when, so, so it's the ability to, to process raw photos. Does it have similar controls to what we would make us happy? I would hope so. Does it have clarity? Of course. I'm happy. Should we take, <laughs> should we take a look? Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. Okay. So um, this is a, a little test application that we're using internally to kind of prove out some ideas. This should give you an idea of just how um, research stage this is, you know, but you'll see that it works quite well. So I've opened up an image uh, that's actually a, a 5D Mark III RAW file. And um, I could definitely use some help in terms of the, uh, the temperature, going to the shadows. Oh, 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 go back, go back. Can you click on that list? No, I can't. Oh. <laughs> no, I just, I saw clarity in that list, so. I want to fix the shadows first. All right. Bring those up. There it is, Bring temperature, I saw down. it. I saw yeah, it. Yeah, dude, it's like. Now, please notice, if I touched on some of these, the, uh, the iPad itself would explode. Oh, so okay, so it's not done. They don't all work. It's not um, baked. They Look, may not black, all work. Whites, sharpen, tint, clarity, clear. I saw, I saw luminance and R, is that ooh. noise reduction? Uh, I will neither confirm nor deny. You may have to go back to the tape. Uh, <laughs> uh, Luminance, so, not really. Ooh, that's a 5D Mark III raw image. So here we are, zooming in 100%. You can tell by the pixel size, can you? No, and, I'm just saying. I'm just saying it's a raw image on a tablet, but it's it's that's a big raw image. So my, you know, the, the vision I have, and I'll be more explicit, is I just want to be able to sit there with my mobile device and you know enjoy my time with photography on you know wherever I am with whatever device I have and not be tethered to a laptop anymore. Using tools that I'm familiar with. Yes. That's, see, that's the kicker is there, there's, there's editing tools that are out there, but they all have different settings mm -hmm. and none of them will transfer back to my Lightroom library. And, and the transfer is the big issue. I mean, you could kludge together some things with Dropbox or other services that will move data around, but it's, it's not going to be as efficient. Well, Dropbox doesn't support you looking at raw images. You can't even, you can store them up there. Yeah. You just can't do anything with them it'll it, it's gonna force you to see a J well it won't even force you to see a JPEG it will uh, and, and by the way for people who are this is bigger than I think you think because there's people that are saying hey I shot raw images and I pushed them up to my to my uh, iPad and and you're able to see them mm -hmm. you're seeing the JPEG proxy it does not show a raw image yeah. you are not editing raw images uh, if you just upload uh, like a, a raw it, it sucks out the JPEG yeah. Um, now, there, there are, I guess, a couple of, of really kind of basic, it's not, this is like camera raw. So, yeah. As, <laughs> Tom as, doesn't yes. want to say it's camera raw. <laughs> Tom, it's okay, you're among friends. So the, the beauty of, of the processing model we introduced with camera raw is that it's parametric or non-destructive. So every right. adjustment is basically text information. Right. And so if you store it once and you make some adjustments, the only thing we need to send to your other devices is a bunch of text to explain what we had changed. But is this going to use that same low, like the smart preview thing? So I'm, even though I'm editing these images, raw images, on my tablet, I'm going to make sure this is, I'm saying this right, and you can tell me if I'm way off. Even though I'm editing raw images on my tablet, I'm not editing the full size 36 megapixel image. You could be. So I think a lot of people would have that problem where they don't want to push 30, 30 yeah, some odd right. gigs to their tablet. So right. they have the option of using the much smaller, you know, more screen resolution uh, option. However, you know, it's certainly within our power. This is, we I mean, just switch the iPad, yep. Um, we can look at this image. It's not my wife's favorite, but she lets me use it, um, of my daughter. And, you know, this is shot with a Leica S2, which is on the order of about 37 megapixels. And we can go in and see... I forgot to wipe her nose before the shot that's at okay. 100%. So this, we can work with the full res, you know, original, if that's part of your workflow. So our, our goal is to provide a, a solution that um, uh, that will get you kind of what you need, and depending on your workflow. If maybe you just have a few high res yeah. ones or you have a lot of lower res ones, whatever fits your device needs or your workflow needs.